college football fans are some of the biggest hypocrites in the world. It's funny how fans of their favorite teams always get hyped when they get a big time transfer out of the transfer portal or they hire a big time head coach from a smaller school. But Arizona fans, they were really irate when Jeff Fish upped and jumped for Washington after he lied and told on a national show that he was planning on staying with Arizona for the next couple of years. And then, of course, Kalen DeBoer did the same thing with Washington. He said that he was going to be there for a while. He said that he was committed to winning at Washington. And all of a sudden, he leaves for Alabama. And college football fans are saying that this is bad for the sport, that the coaches can just up, jump, and leave at any part of their contract without really paying their dues to the university. And I understand where y'all are coming from. And I do understand y'all frustrations, especially if you are an Arizona fan, because Arizona was completely irrelevant in college football. I didn't even know they really had a college football team until, you know, I saw what Jeff Fish was doing recently at Arizona and I saw Noah Fafita going crazy. But outside of Jeff Fish, you have really struggled to find a head coach that's been able to keep Arizona, even at a sustainable level where they can be a bowl caliber football team on a consistent basis. So it's understandable why Wildcats Nation is upset about losing Jeff Fish. Washington fans, though, Kalen DeBoer may have just made himself one of the most hated former head coaches to ever take his former team to a national championship because in the span of a couple of days, this dude went from beloved to megally hated after leading the team to the national championship. Like, listen, this is part of life, people. I, what, what really shocks me about people who get outraged about coaches leaving and players transferring is that you never get mad when a player leaves a smaller university to play for your university because he sees that's a better opportunity. Same thing with the head coach, but as soon as a head coach wants to leave to put his family in a better financial situation to make more money, be in a situation that's more sustainable to winning, he's a villain. Same thing with the players. And another thing that really confuses me about how college football fans that are fans of these two teams upset about this hire is that these coaches aren't doing anything that you want to do yourself. Be honest, at your current job, if you had another job that offered you times to the pay, where you were doing the same thing, you mean to tell me that you wouldn't leave neither? You see, when it comes to the whole argument of money versus morality, morality loses the majority of times. This is a money-driven world, people. A lot of decisions that we make are based on money. And another thing is that we live in a selfish society. We live in a selfish world, and there's nothing wrong with that. Everybody has to be a little selfish because they all have to do what's in their best interest. What you do every day, the decisions that you make are for you because you feel those are the best decisions that you can make to put yourself in the position to win. And that's what Kalen DeBoer and Jeff Fish did. I don't get how you can get mad at a guy for choosing to leave Washington, a really good program, by the way, for a school like Alabama. Like, Alabama has all the resources, all the money in the world for Kalen DeBoer to continue to have success there and do it a lot easier than what he was able to do at Washington. Yeah, it sucks that you lost a great head coach and you may view your program as a stepping stone program, but maybe try to hire a head coach who actually played for the U for the university, has his heart and soul rooted in Washington Huskies football, and you're more likely will find somebody willing to stay. I'm pretty sure Jonathan Smith who was coaching at Oregon State, also played for that school, never would have left them if they would have remained in the Power 5 conference. You see, when you got a little bit of skin in the game with a certain team, like, for example, when you look at this whole situation with, who is a really big alumni? I, I forgot what it was, but when you look at college football today, the coaches that stayed the longest with said program or coaches that were alumni of that school. For example, Jeff Brom, Louisville. He played quarterback there, had a lot of success at Louisville, right? And when you look at a school like Washington, you know, you're a tier two program, 
But that doesn't mean you don't have the capability of becoming a tier one program as long as you can find a head coach that is committed to staying there for a few decades. You feel me? That's what you need to be able to become a powerhouse. Look at Nick Saban. You know, Alabama already was a little bit of a blue blood before he got there, but now he stayed there so long, he built up an infrastructure that made Alabama an elite program. And you look at, you know, Kalen DeBoer and what he did at Washington, they were a good program under him. But the thing is that with Washington, you got to find more head coaches that are more rooted into the program, that have skin in the game, that actually have a unique bond with Washington Huskies football and the fan base. You see, you hire these good coaches, but they don't stay because they only view Washington as a stepping stone. You got to stop hiring coaches that view Washington as a stepping stone and try to find more Chris Petersons. Chris Peterson was doing this thing at Boise State. He went to Washington and continued to have success there. He's probably one of the better head coaches that Washington has had in some time. Jeff Fish at Arizona, like, it's understandable why he left Arizona. He was never going to stay there. You fans can get all mad at all you want to about, oh, well, he promised he was going to stay. Bro, like, there's people that make promises every day that they can't keep. You've made promises that you can't keep. Well, these parents and these players are extremely upset. You know, I was talking to a player on my football team for the college that I go to. And he said that when these players commit to a university to play football, they're mainly committing for the coaches, okay? Like, these players don't really care about, you know, the university itself. They only care about can the coaching develop them, get them to the next level, or are they going to have the opportunity of being able to start right away? Like, you can't get mad. When the head coach up jumps and leaves for a different program, but then you praise your school for taking the head coach from a smaller program. You know, it, it's fucked up how college football has just become this manhunt. You feel me? It, it just seems like everybody's out for themselves. Nobody has loyalty and commitment to the program anymore. But you know how you can change that? How about you hire head coaches? That don't view your school as an opportunity to something bigger, but view your school as a, as a program that has the possibility to become great and to become a tier one program. The only thing they're missing is the coach. Those are the kind of guys you need to be hiring. Jeff Fish, like, it, it further proves my point. There are many Washington fans and many people out there that believe he's not going to be at Washington too long because... He's eyeing that Florida job or he's eyeing a job in the NFL. You see, you need to hire these coaches that have connections to your university, ties to your university. No matter how much success Jeff Brom has at Louisville, he probably would never leave that university because he has skin in the game. He played with that program. He has blood, sweat, and tears left on that field. So, of course, he's never going to leave Louisville anytime soon. He's an alumni there. But for Jeff Fish... He didn't have any ties to Arizona. That was just an opportunity for him to put himself in a better situation. And he goes to Washington and he's doing the same exact thing. Stop making hires that are all about how good of a coach is and try to find a coach that not only can be a good coach for your program, but also wants to build up your program and leave it in a better state than where he found it. So I, I really don't understand all the bitterness from these Arizona and Washington fans about losing their head coaches it's just that's part of college football nowadays everybody's going through the same thing you see the only thing is that fans don't like it when their team has a mass exodus of players that enter the transfer portal but you laugh at schools like Georgia and Texas and them when it happens to them nobody should be feeling bad for what's happened to Alabama I don't feel bad I mean, I didn't feel bad when they got Jamison Williams or when they got Jermaine Burton or when they got Jameer Gibbs. When, when Jameer Gibbs left Georgia Tech, that killed them. It really did. Like their previous head coach, George Collins, like he was doing a pretty good job of building up that program and recruiting. It's just that the results on the field weren't what people were hoping for. And eventually the players just walked out the door and went elsewhere. But if Jameer Gibbs would have stayed at Georgia Tech and a couple of their other key pieces, there's no telling how good they could have been if Jeff Collins was actually a good coach. You see, that, that's just how college football is today. 
And if you're just one of those people that just say, oh, college football is terrible. I'm, I'm tired of watching this sport. Okay, stop watching it. You, you're not hurting nobody. College football is as popular in the year 2024 as it's ever been. It has become the second most popular sport in America. At one point, basketball, the NBA, and MLB were popular than college football. Now the NFL and college football run, run American sports. And people always ask me, JT, why you always talk about football? You never talk about any other sport. Because there's no need to talk about any other sport. I love college football. I love the NFL. And plus, if I really needed to chase more views and more money, I don't need to go to any other sport to do that when the two most popular ones are the ones I love talking about the most. So there's no need to talk about anything else. It's just fans just hate losing great coaches and great players. That's understandable. But Arizona fans got little things in their bars now where you can literally piss on Jeff Fish. Like, come on, man. Like, well, what are we doing here? You're mad at a guy for bettering his situation, doing the same thing that you would have done yourself. I know there's some good-hearted people out there that say, man, if I was Jeff Fish, I would have wanted to build something special. That's understandable. But the majority of people out there who get on these whole high horses and they always be preaching on social media about loyalty to the program, like, save me the bullshit. Like, really. Like, everybody, when a head coach leaves that's really good, leaves a smaller program for a bigger one, they always bring this up how NIL and the transfer portal have changed the sport. This has been happening in college football since the beginning of time. That's just how this thing works. If you are... Alabama, and you need a great head coach, guess where you're going to get it from? You're going to get a great head coach from a program that people believe to be a little bit under you. That's just how it works in life. In life, your goal should always be to level up. You can't get mad at somebody for bettering their situation. I would never get mad at Jeff Fish for doing what he felt was in his best interest to provide financial stability for his family and also what he felt was best for his goals and aspirations in his career. Oh, JT, like, you, 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 just, you just carry a water for Jeff Fish and Caleb Nabor. Like, what about the commitment that he made to the players? You know, it's funny. Last week when I was listening to Nick Saban on the Pat McAfee show, one of Pat McAfee's co-hosts asked him about how does he recruit when he's up there in age? Do players never ask him about... Is he going to, how long is he going to be there before he retires? Because you know what Nick Saban always asked him? Are you going to be here all four years when I am coaching and I don't retire? And guess what the players say? They don't know. So it's just like, there's no loyalty in college football, but there's not a lot of loyalty to a lot of things in life. That's a problem in today's society. We don't have a lot of loyalty. Everybody's looking out for themselves. Everybody's trying to do the best thing to put themselves in the best position to win in life. And that's just what college football is. And, and it just seems like a lot of college football fans, especially the ones that are fans of Washington and Arizona, are really hurt about losing two pretty good coaches. Kalen DeBoer was a phenomenal head coach. You, Of course you want to keep him around. It's, I can understand your frustration. I definitely understand your frustration if you're an Arizona fan. But at the same time, how did Arizona replace Jack Fish? Oh, they went and they hired a head coach from a smaller program. Imagine how the San Jose State fans feel about losing a pretty good head coach for a bigger program. They probably feel treat they probably feel cheated. They probably feel, you know, a little bit sad that now San Jose State may struggle to find a suitable replacement that can keep them at a consistent winning level relative to the expectations that they have. Hell, FAU if Tom Herman leads FAU to two big seasons that end up resulting in FAU potentially making it to the college football playoffs as a G5 auto bid. You think he's going to be coaching at FAU for long? No, he's not. That's just what happens when you are a school that doesn't have the same resources that another program can provide. At the end of the day, Kalen DeBoer winning at Washington would be a lot harder than him winning at Alabama. You know, it also isn't the easiest to recruit at Washington. Now, he could have stepped this game up and gotten better in those areas. But I really don't get why so many college football fans just always want to rant on social media about how there's no loyalty in college football. College football has been this way for a while before the transfer portal started. 
No, I do agree that, you know, they do need to change the timetable for when you're able to leave your school for another program. Because I do believe that it's messed up how you can be a head coach who has your team in their conference championship game, win the conference. You don't make the playoffs, but you get a pretty good New Year's Six Bowl game. And yet you just decide not to coach in it because you are focused on your other job. So it's just, it's tough. College football has definitely changed a lot, but coaches have been doing this since the start of the sport. Well, these coaches should honor their contracts. Well, these players should honor their commitments. They shouldn't be transferring four years. They they shouldn't be transferring willy-nilly like that. It's funny how everybody was all for player mobility, right? Everybody was always about, man, the players need to get paid. Oh, the players should be able to transfer for when whenever they want to. The coaches can do it. Why can't they? But all of a sudden, these players are executing their rights that everybody wanted them to have. And now everybody's upset about the repercussions. That's crazy. Nobody ever thinks about the repercussions. Everybody always thinks about what's best for their team. So it's just like, who truly is selfish? You feel me? Arizona fans and Washington fans are mad at Kellen DeBoer for bettering themselves, getting more money in the process to provide for their families. All because they chose to leave their university. Because they felt like they were indebted to them for some reason. These people don't owe y'all anything. You're fans. You go to the games. You pay money to watch the games. You pay money for merchandising. We get it. You support the team. You matter. But at the end of the day, bro, like, these people are humans. If they they don't do anything that you want to do yourself. Most of you guys who get on social media and complain about how there's no loyalty, if you had a job offer to do the same thing that you were doing at your current job for another one with times two, times three to pay, guess what you're doing? You're leaving. F how long you've been for your current job. Like, there, there's no loyalty when it comes to business. And college football is still a business at the day, at the end of the day. So it's just college football fans, to me, just sound like big hypocrites. Because you love when players transfer from smaller schools that are really good to come play for a big-time program. But you get mad when good players want to transfer out of your program to go to a program they feel is better. Same thing with the head coaches. You're a hypocrite. It's just college football is effed up all the way around when it comes to loyalty. But it's not a lot of loyalty when it comes to business and sports. It's a production-based business, and everybody's trying to do what's in their best interest to put themselves in the best position to succeed. And that's why I never get mad at these things. Like I'm a Miami Hurricanes fan, and we've been down for so many years. But when we got Cam Ward, it felt so good. But imagine how Washington State fans have to feel Losing Cameron Ward to the transfer portal due to name, image, and likeness. Going to play for a school like Miami just because they have a bigger bag they can offer him. You know, like college football isn't in a great place right now when it comes to morality, morality and ethics. But, you know, morality and ethics when it comes to them versus money, money wins the majority of the time, people. It's just how the world works.